Corpus Hermeticum, translated by Maxwell Lewis Latham. Chapter 1. Pymanda Commences. When I should think about the nature of the universe and could elevate the mind's insight, I should raise it towards the upper world with the senses of the body already rendered unconscious. How the body is accustomed to the senses, which, for this reason, it is saturated or burdened by weariness to sleep. Suddenly, a sort of vision came to me. I discerned a body with immense magnitude that called me by name. It would clamour in this way. What is it, O Mercurius? What do you wish to see and hear? What is it? What do you long to learn and understand? Then I asked, Who on earth are you? He said, I am the one called Pymander, a mind of divine power you must yet see. In truth, I will be present everywhere for you, if that's what you would like. Trismegistus said, I long to learn the nature of the universe and to study God. Pymander said, You must comprehend your own mind, and I will teach you the works in their entirety. Trismegistus said, and thought in his mind. When these things had been said, he changed shape, and all of a sudden the universe lightened up, for I saw a sort of immense sight, or everything clearly turning itself into light. It was too delightful a sight, and what I gazed at miraculously was pleasing. A short while afterwards, some horrendous shade, having slid underneath me, span around on one side, it evaporated into a kind of humid nature, and then its unspeakably horrid face contorted. From there, a kind of great vapour burst into sound. My voice came out of the sound, which was a voice of light. I thought about the voice of light, which came out of here. It produced a doing word. Yet standing near here, the humidity of nature warmed the voice, but out of the humidity of nature in the guts, a pure and fast-moving fire flew forwards. It aimed for the heavens. Thin air appearing with the spirit was also allotted a place in the middle region between the fire and the water. In truth, the earth and water were thrown down, so in turn mixed together, which was how the earth's face had been overwhelmed with water, so that nowhere could stand above the water line. These two elements were then forcibly moved from a spiritual word, what was carried over by them was resounding in their ears. Amanda said, As you direct your senses, what is this vision which he would want you to have? Trismegistus said, I would like to learn. Amanda said, I am that light. I am the mind, and am your more ancient god, rather than the humid nature which shone out of the shade. In truth, the offspring of the mind is the word, a shining son of God. Trismegistus said, So what do I say? Pymanda replied, Meditate. What is seen and heard inside you is the word of the Lord, the mind, yet God the Father. For they are not very far away from each other. Theirs is a union of life. Trismegistus said, I am grateful. Thank you. Amanda said, Yet in the first place, you must meditate with the light and learn. Trismegistus thought, When these things were said, what I had spoken about a long time ago was how he could turn me into a god. When Pymander could have done this, suddenly I looked around at a light appearing with innumerable forces in my mind. It was adorned by an unending fire with enormous power which encircled everything and was ruling in stability. This I perceived as the word, through Pymander, whom had spoken to me himself, leaving me astonished and awestruck. Pymander said, Had you seen the first species prevailing in the mind with an infinite command? Trismegistus said, Such kinds of things are for me, Pymander. Where do the elements of nature flow from? 
Hernanda said, out of God's will and his beautiful word, which is grasped unwillingly by the world, for his remaining example, which had been supplied by the elements and living seeds. However, the mind, God, produced the most fruitful, fairer sex, and by her fertility, life and light, with the word itself had given birth to another mind-maker, whom is indeed a god of fire, the spirits, and divine command. He had made the seven governors, one after another, who understood the perceptible world by circles, and their disposition is called fate. Whence he connected the word of God by spreading out God's elements, which are held down fast. To the maker's mind, it is the pure skill and unity of nature, but it was truly consubstantial, and the elements of nature which remained, falling downwards without reason, were so that they are just as they should be, just materials. Indeed, the mind and the maker are one with the word, holding the circles together and turning them with quick rapacity. He bent the machine to his will, anticipated its outcome and turned it around from a beginning to an end without end. But it always begins there, where it ends. The mind itself actually turned the circuits of all these together. It forged living organisms out of the lower elements, which had no reason, nor had the air offered flying creatures reason. In truth, the capacity for reason was offered to water-borne creatures. The spaces between the water and earth are also distinct from God himself in a way which would please the mind. A short while later, the earth had living beings that were within it. Evidently God produced quadrupeds, serpents, wild animals from the countryside and domesticated animals alike. Yet the father of all things created man, similar to himself, appearing with life and a flash of understanding, and God wished him joy, just like a son. For man was beautiful, and had about him the image of the father. For God was certainly about to delight the world with true matter in a particular form, and God allowed all of his works for humanity's use. Yet when man had settled down in the course of time, came the begetting of all things so that he too wanted to make things himself. Whence, from contemplation of the Father, man's downfall was to expect generation, and although he might have had within him the power to do all things, it was from his doing works that he had retracted the attention of the seven governors. Yet it was these beings rejoicing, by their singular meditation of the human mind, that they had returned sharing man, who is a special order of beings, who, after he had been spread about, looked around at their essence, and his own special nature. Man was already longing to penetrate and break away from the circles which revolve with the power to understand the fire of the rulers and governors. For man, who should have judgment and power over everything imposed it on the mortal and living beings of the world without reason. He arose through harmony and banished the power of the circles, penetrating and releasing them, and had revealed his nature. Man's nature sunk downwards, just as when he might have gazed at the beautiful form of God's nature with its miraculous beauty, to be a prophecy, and might possess an effigy of God himself, above, and all the actions of the seven governors, man smiled with that profound feeling in love, just like when a woman might have looked at his human beauty, his appearance in the water, and he might have been seen with the same kind of admiration on earth. After this, man eagerly pursued a similar form to himself, existing in him, just as though he had loved her, and went into the water, longing to have met with her. Having made out the footsteps, he followed lacking reason, but had been born with free will and form. He was being carried by that wholly natural feeling of being embraced with love. He entwined and mingled together with her inwardly, when man alone was reckoned out of all the living creatures on earth of having a twin nature. The reason was indeed because he had a mortal body, but it is immortal on account of man himself being substantial. For what is immortal keeps all of the collective judgments. In truth, the other living beings which are mortal had suffered, having been subject to fate, 
therefore no higher harmony stood in the way having been truly put in danger slipped up and being made a slave is in harmony the male sex protected both himself and the other sex with her fruitfulness a spring is there which feeds the rivers and trees and being made alert it was man who was keeping watch thus she was confined and subject to his control trismegistus said you are mind itself to my reasoning Ananda said it is a mystery because throughout all ages to this day a race has been hidden from mankind surely nature intermingling with it had brought to bear a miracle which overcomes the admiration of all miracles for man for when the seven governors could have already been imbued with harmony thereabouts which i related to you a short time ago clearly nature itself had not withheld the father but the spirit indeed the seven continually brought forth men the seven governors having control and sublime natures both the males and likewise females of the race yet i had introduced these aspects and so created the seven trismegistus said o pinander i was recently burning with a desire which affects me besides i long to hear the rest you shouldn't leave me here like this i beg you why don't you tell me about the rest of it Amanda said, Silence! But I have not yet released the first sermon. Trismegistus said, Look, I am now silent. Amanda said, Of these seven, as I said, generation is made in this way. For a woman having control of air and water needs to join them out of fire at just the right time. She had chosen a spirit out of the ether and nature glued the bodies together to a species of man that is fit to be moulded however nature doesn't proceed towards the soul and death out of life and light of course life is lavished upon the soul and finally the light of death the members were actually all waiting together continuously at the edge of the world a circuit with a sense of its origins and at the same time the races however you must now listen to the rest of the discussion that you wanted to hear with the utmost diligence. The knot is untied at last, God willing, in a complete circuit of everything, for all living beings together of each race are destroyed by one woman with a man, and indeed womanhood was like prepared out of the masculine part. Straight away God had shouted with a sacred word, Let all the offspring and my work sprout, ripen and increase. A portion of the mind passed through is above you. Your race must recognize and consider your immortal nature. Know that the love of the body is a cause of death. Learn the nature of all things. God had brought mixtures together, acting with foresight from these sayings, through fate and harmony, and set up the generation. A second special race appeared from where they are collectively propagated. Finally, whoever followed that way had known goodness itself, which is above the essence. In truth, whoever loves embracing the body goes astray and stumbles around in the darkness of death and feels a sense of evil. Trismegistus said, However, many don't do as they ought to. I am speaking about ignorant people. So this is the reason they should be deprived of immortality. Pymander said, O oh, Mercurius, it is not enough that you should only see understanding but you must also listen trismegistus said unless i have not yet professed understanding which i should do nevertheless what i do understand i remember pimanda said i am glad that is if you grasp what's been said trismegistus said answer me pimanda i beg you why should they who are buried to death have a dignified death pimanda said because a sorrowful shade had led the way to a particular body. Indeed, the humid nature from here, which I mentioned before, out of this shade, in truth, the body is placed in the perceptible world, and from here death itself finally welled up. Do you grasp this concept, Mercurius? Nevertheless, you grasp where the cause comes from. Whoever knows himself crosses over to God, since the word of God has been handed down throughout the ages. Trismegistus said, because the father consists of everything made out of life and light, from where man was born. Amanda replied, you speak right. God is light and life, and is the father 
from where man is born. If, therefore, you understand yourself, your composition out of life and light, you will be able to transcend towards life and back to the life light again. Trismegistus said, Until now you could say I've spoken my mind. Where then might I be able to descend towards life with agreement? Pymandas said, God himself ordered the mind so that man participating in the mind should turn it towards God. Trismegistus said, Therefore, should men not have one single mind? Pymandas said, You speak the right, Mercurius, for I am present, a mind in theirs. Those in my presence, men who are of good character, have pious souls, are pure of heart, and are religious and sacred. He bears works from these qualities, so long as men should altogether be able to distinguish them straight away, so that they should have the peace of the Father and his favour. Therefore they give thanks conceding to the blessings of the pious and praising God highly by singing solemn hymns. Rationally the body feels the disgust of the senses being pressed together at death, inasmuch as those who discern clearly bawdy thoughts which might be fatal to the senses do nevertheless the mind itself keeps busy with its duty, and the gatekeepers stop it from falling into the snares of the body. I do not in any way allow it to follow that end, for men are accustomed to such ugliness with huge flattery. I keep the doors perpetually closed, and have extinguished the kindling of inordinate desires. My way is against the ignorant, the unpatriotic, the cowards, the envious, all the unjust, and completely far removed from you cutting down the pious and letting them loose. A judge, in the form of an avenging demon, who, by forcing fire's point, will knock out the senses, and what's more, it was in order to bring about furnishing man with even greater weapons for his sins, that the guiltily accused might have committed an uglier fault, and the more keenly he prayed, he inflamed the longing of insatiable desire. It was without any interruption with his struggle in the darkness. It had deprived sin of life. Fire attacked his insides violently and was to increase feeling the pain of torture in an extraordinary way. Trismegistus said, O oh mind, how can I claim to be careful in everything I do? You have shown me things which are far away, but answer me this. What might the future hold? before it arrives. Pymander said, Certainly. First, in the release of the material body as it sinks into an, an alternate form which the species it would have had before hides imperceptibly for the next day. About the various ways for a demon to have casually possessed a body, the possession is conceded to and then dismissed. The senses, parts of the body made of the soul, overflow into springs. At some time they were to make a journey in themselves on the straight and narrow, and the energies necessarily angered must have striven to revert to their nature by reason without further ado. So what remains then rushes back to the upper worlds through harmony. From here the duty of the first zone had waxed into existence, and similarly it waned and went back. The second zone is the machinery of evils, leisure and pain. The third zone is lust and leisurely deceit. The fourth zone is insatiable and commanding ambition. The fifth zone is profane arrogance and reckless courage. The sixth zone is crooked opportunity to gain riches and likewise leisurely moments. The seventh zone is of ingrained lies. Then the rational soul being drawn out goes through the motions of harmony, reverts to its chosen nature, having a particular nature with energy, and is then one with those who are in that place. The soul praises the father. They had also brought together numerous powers in themselves, and having worked out these powers, they enjoyed them with God. Something else is their highest good, by which the luck of the draw coincided with the need to learn. God had surely come into being. Besides, this here pertains to you all, together, unless you might want to just about become their cherished leader. Worthy men could be in your care, so that the human rights might have followed divine well-being, from your gift. Trismegistus said, he thought, when Pymander spoke of such things, it brought him back into himself, possessing numerous divine powers. 
Nevertheless, I offered blessings and gave thanks to the parent of the universe. Having now been invigorated, I rose up away from Pananga, from being taught the order of nature as a whole, and contemplated the clearest sight. From this place I grasped something from men of piety, and the knowledge which adorned their speech. The sages said, O common man, born of the earth, it is you who give yourselves up to drink, and are drunk in sleep and ignorance. You must live sober lives, and refrain from the indulgence of filling your belly. Those who get a reasonable sleep in are soothed. As the Gister said, we thought, however, hearing it clearly, they met with me in unison, and then I was thrown backwards. The sages said, Why, O oh men of the earth, should you plunge headlong into death, having stared straight at it? Since the opportunity from us would by no means fall short of immortality, which must consequently follow it, you must now recall those who are destitute from having labored, and are helpless in the darkness of ignorance. Scatter the shadows from the darkness with the light. Receive immortality. Flee from corruption. In truth, they who had a little laugh at him went on their journey in death, having been cast down. However, they lay partly prostrate at my feet that I might prepare them as they beg for mercy. Therefore I was made the leader of the human race, helping them. Surely it was shown what reason should be, and what was consequently followed from those greetings. I poured in wisdom and the discourses of those with ears to hear, whereby it was done so that those listeners would have brought forth rain out of storm clouds. At last, with the night approaching, I anticipated the sun setting by its course, so that men might give thanks to God, after which they should carry those thanks with them, when each one settled into his particular bed. Trismegistus thought to himself, Whatever, I did Pymander a favor. I wrote down how to penetrate into souls, and having arrived at what all things aim at, I rested in gladness. For when a sober sleep of the body had appeared, and squinting my eyes at unwilling truth, there was a silence of goodness from the fruitful pregnancy of conversation mentioning all of the good things in their genesis. These things touched me, out of drinking up pure mind, that is, from Pymander, with the word of divine power. And where he had been breathed upon by a divine spirit, I was made, composed of truth. Accordingly, I gave thanks to God the Father for all of the soul's energies. Pymander said, God is the Holy Father of everybody. The will of Holy God had been fulfilled from particular powers. Holy God, who becomes known from things familiar to themselves, you are holy, who, with the word, constitutes the whole. You are holy, of whom all nature is an image. You are holy, that had never been created by nature. You are holy, stronger with all power. You are holy, greater with all excellence. You are holy, better with all praise. Receive the sacred offerings owed to you out of the words flowing from the heart and soul. The ineffable, which needs to be made known, is from silence alone, and from silence whoever has turned aside from contradictory deceit, is to learn of the truth. Send me a sign, strengthen me, and complete those partaking of this grace. Those who are turned this way and that in ignorance are indeed my brothers, or your sons and relations, for I surely stand out as faithful to you. I speak a testimony concerning you. I arise into life and the light. You are the Father himself and must be worshipped. But your man wants to have been received in one sanctity with you, and when the power from that sanctity appears, you would have complied with the judgment of everything.